So I'm going to show you how to analyze Ethernet with the Regal oscilloscope. I realize that some people who's on uh, YouTube might be interested in doing this, um, but this is for a class. What I did was I peeled back some Cat5 cabling. I just cut through the insulation with a, with a knife, and then I exposed the twisted pair inside. And for that, and then I sort of separated the orange wires only out. And then I actually used a little flame and burned back some of the insulation. So I could actually see the copper wires inside there because we actually need access to those copper wires on the orange wire only, or the orange wires only, both the wires. And you want to make sure that those two wires don't touch each other. It won't cause a problem other than it won't work. So it's not like you're going to have flames coming out, but you, you definitely don't want them to touch each other. You attach a probe to each one of the wires. So I have a primary probe coming off my A connection on the oscilloscope, and the two probes go to one to each of the orange wires. Then I plug the Cat5 cable one side into a computer, just a little laptop I had, and the other into the network. You could do a Mac or a PC. I used a Windows PC because I knew how to configure the network card for 10 base T. That's the next step is that you go onto the computer into device settings and you set the card to run at 10 base T rather than 100 base T or uh, whatever. So when it's running in 10 base T, it's using Manchester encoding, which is a simple um, protocol to analyze. And so anyway, I set it to 10 base T and then basically it was set up. And now the video will take over and you can kind of see how we use the Regal to check it out. Okay, when you sit down, you're gonna to wanna to turn on the unit by clicking on this button. And then you wanna set a couple settings. You'll set this voltage, which is your amplitude, to 20 volts or 10 volts, somewhere in there, whatever works the best. You do that by adjusting this large button here. It's right above uh, these connections, the one closest to the screen. And then you'll want to set or make sure that you're set at 100 uh, nanoseconds right in there, excuse me. So it's the other big button, make sure it's on 100 nanoseconds, okay? And at that point then you should be able, ready to analyze it. So at this point of the video, I realized that I forgot to tell you about what happens if the button's red. So you notice the auto button in this picture is red. That means that recording is stopped and it's no longer sort of buffering the signal into memory. And that happens when you press the single button, which is the button clear on the right. Okay, when you press that, it turns red and that allows you to see what's in buffer. If it's red and you need to capture the signal, then just press it again and it'll turn green and now it's in memory. It happens very quickly. And then you can press the single button and step through and see your signal. So play with that a little bit, um, but I wanted to warn you in case you did have a red button instead of a green one. Now you press this button up here until it's green, and that means that it's going to be taking in the signal and it stores it in memory. And um, I think all the other configurations are fine. It should be hooked up to the wire already, and you need to turn on the computer. So you just, if it's sleeping, click on the button and let it wake up. And it should be at the address, the IP address, 10.130.35.65. Okay. And so what you'll do is you'll take the computer, your other computer, just your home one, it could just be, or your private one, and uh, it should be hooked up to Wi-Fi, and you'll type in ping, and then that address. 10.130.35.65 and that should start pinging the machine. Now I don't have to tell it to keep going. It, in Macs it automatically goes. Um, if you're using Windows you'll have to use a switch and you can just do IP command slash question mark, I see sorry, uh, ping space slash question mark and that'll tell you how to do it. It's like ping slash C 
and then the IP address or something like that. And it'll just keep pinging it because we want to keep sending traffic to this machine. So that's what's happening. You're pinging this computer here. And this is looking at the traffic in between. You notice here it's connected up, probed in. And look, we're seeing some traffic come across. Okay, so now what you have to do is press the single button and that will take a picture or show you a picture of the waveform and you can move that left or right. This is what's in memory. And you can move that left or right by this button right here. So the smaller one will move it left and right. Okay, so let's look a little bit left here and I'm gonna just press the single button and it will show me that view. So it must be buffering a little strange. So when you move this out of the view, you gotta go get it out of the buffer again. Okay, so you notice this strange sawtooth waveform. And what happens is this is the waveform before your real data. It seems to be aligning the clock so that it will, um, uh, at the end of those um, sort of sawtooth waveforms, I'm pressing single again to get the view. At the end of them, which are there are 30 of them, then your data actually appears. So let me move it a little bit to the left again. Okay, and we'll start seeing. I go up here and I press single again and it takes it. There it is. Suddenly the sawtooth suddenly stops. There's the end. And there's the start of my data. So I'm gonna move this over until I kind of get it aligned nicely. So I kind of like this to be somewhere in here where this trough at the end of those sawtooths is down at the bottom and it crosses the line somewhere in the middle. So I can say definitively, maybe even a little bit more to the left. Okay, so that's on an up. So remember up is one, up, there'd be another zero. And let me grab the data by pressing the single button again. There it goes. Okay, so now I can go and I can start analyzing my bits. And what I'd like you to do is do eight bits out of this. So take eight bits, write them down, either ones and zeros, right? And then reverse them. Because remember, this is Manchester recording. It's Lillian, we want Big Indian. So you switch the bits to the other side and then find out what the hex value and the decimal value are of those eight bits, okay? So you can easily look at a table and find those out or you can calculate them, whichever you want. Um, and then when you're done, just hit the clear button up here and that'll clear the memory and you're done. It should be right back to how it started. So, and I can just stop my pinging at that point. If um, you forget to send the pinging through, then you won't get any waveform over here. So you gotta make sure you're pinging. And uh, there's other problems that might happen as far as some of these settings, you might wanna make sure you got those right. But um, overall, it's pretty easy to get a uh, signal out of it. And you can just leave this going, uh, shut this down so you can just turn this off and shut the laptop and the next person can take over. Okay, thanks.